what well, first of all your thoughts on the three day winning streak that we're seeing on in the NSC fingers crossed or are you uh, one of those doubters um i think um it's it's actually it's been expected um Yes, it's possible. There was a there was a brief pause last week, and um, that was probably because some people are taking locking in profits. And but I guess um, the people are actually now more positive. You know, we've seen it again in the last three days, and mm -hmm. it's actually been expected. I think it's a positive, it's a good plus for for the market. Let's zero in on to, into the petroleum marketing sector, which obviously is your forte. Um, your thoughts on the gains we've seen so far this year? Um, we're just discussing off camera. That sector is up about 10% year to date, so underperforming the NSC. Is that because of a few companies that have dragged it, or is it more a reflection of you know, some cautiousness concerning that sector? Okay, um, I think um, the thing is um, for the petroleum marketers, yes, it's been up 10% um, um, year to date. And But if you look at it um, in the first quarter and in the second quarter, I think it's experienced its own fair share of a good rally. Um, as at Q1, it had gained close to 30%. Uh, we saw rallies because it was coming off a very low base in um, the 2009 financial year. And that's actually because um, that year was not really a very good year you know, for most petroleum marketers. So we saw a beating on their prices. First mm -hmm. quarter, second quarter, we saw a rally on the stocks. You know, But it's actually slimmed down you know, in the last... Um, in the last quarter, you know, because some stocks have actually taken a hit. Um, we note African petroleum has taken a hit. Uh, people have actually been more conservative, you know, on Cornell. It had rallied up to about 56 naira for Tinkobo, but we've seen that price, you know, slow down, you know, to, you know, just a little above 39 naira. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a fair, it's a fair share. Um, it's actually a balance between some people having taken a rally and, you know, some people have actually taken lucky profits, you know, on some stocks in that sector. But what are, what's looking attractive for you going forward now? We do know that, um, like you said, it's just up about 10% year to date. Um, but some of you, um, some stocks have come up significantly. From the current levels, which ones are you looking at? Um, I think um, our, our favorite pick in that sector remains um, Owando PLC, um, and that's probably because it does have it does have some you know level of um, diversification. While others are actually just in the, into the distribution business of petroleum products, um, it does have you know an upstream exposure. It's also div uh, making booking revenues you know from its gas and power projects. A number of its projects have actually come up um, online in the current year. It's up um, upstream assets. Has about two of them actually producing. So it, I think it's a favorite play. Um, valuation wise, it's trading at about a 70% discount to you know a valuation. Um, also, um, I think it, another key stock which you know would be looking at um, is actually Mobile. Um, Mobile um, currently it's trading at you know about 130 naira. There's still some upside there. Cornell, yes, because it's taking a beating in the last you know one or two months because people have you know been actually more conservative in the stock. Um, there's still some upside and um, with Cornell PLC. What about MRS? That's another stock that I've heard. I think about uh, for MRS. MRS, for MRS, yes, there's some upside. We we know that it's been acquired, and but for most of the petroleum marketers, I think the key thing to note is um, it's a, a lot of people look at it as a dividend, a still dividend paying company. Right now, MRS, based on like last year's financials, it paid out you know just about 30% of uh, you know its dividends. And if you're actually looking to lock in dividend, which is m basically the best investment case for most of the um, mature companies like um, MRS and you know the rest, I think um, it's not looking as attractive. You know, but if you look at companies like um, 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 mobile, if you, look, if you even look at a company like mobile, mobile still even at, uh, looks has dividend basis, and um, you still have you could book in a 10% yield, you know, by the time they pay in either FY10 dividends. And it also on a dividend basis, total still does look attractive, you know, but capital appreciation wise, we were actually more conservative on the stock. But you know, dividends, um, I think total is also one to look at. Let's come back to Owando. Obviously, that's like the big energy player there, yeah. it's very diversified, like you mentioned, it's into gas, into the upstream sector as well. But some People that I have talked to have said that um, one of their key concerns is obviously the rate of growth, particularly entry into the upstream sector, which is, I mean, for equity investors in Nigeria, a, a very new terrain. Um, don't you see a risk in what they are doing in terms of the diversification, particularly into the upstream sector? Um, I think uh, if you actually weigh the risk against the rewards, I guess the rewards would actually do it, you mm -hmm. know, because um, the upstream exposure offers you you know, higher margins. And this is a company which is an indigenous player, you know, and so it's it's looking to, you know, leverage on this individual on the indigenous um, concern, you know, and book, you know, extra revenues. Um, we expect that and there would be a marginal field round and it, it's gonna book get this asset, you know, at um, very very favorable concerns due being an indigenous company. Um, I also think uh, you know uh, if you look at it broadly, I think um, 
the diversification is actually key. And yeah. if you relatively, margins for, you know, the downstream guys are probably between 3 and 4%, you know, and they've even improved in the last year because 2009 was actually a bad year for them. But for uh, the upstream exposure, um, we see um, margins of above 20%, you know, which just um, raises um, your, the, the investment case for the company and its diversification process. And we, obviously, we can't go away from the petroleum marketing sector without talking about this issue of deregulation. Um, it's been on the front burner for some governments, but at some point, I think it has a way of going back to yeah. the back burner. Um, elections are coming next year, so it's it's something that I think we probably will not see till after elections. But how critical is it going forward for that sector for us to have the regulation? Is it sustainable that we, um, we'll continue to see government subsidize that sector? Um, personally, I don't think it's sustainable. You know, if you're looking at the figures alone, you know that and what government is actually even spending, you know, on paying the subsidies is close to, you know, 70 or 80 percent of our capital votes. And so if it's actually wiser for the government to tune those monies into actually boosting infrastructure in the country than actually doing, you know, paying out subsidies. Um, if you even had listened to the CBN governor, one of the key things which he raised when he talked about, you know, um, the foreign exchange recently was um, that some of the monies you know, have been also used to pay service, which is actually a substantial hit, you know, on the federal government and, you know, its expenditure. Mm. So I think um, it's actually going to happen, but um, the timing is actually what's key. I don't see it happening before the elections because I guess the government will actually be concerned about actually implementing such a policy, you know, which would not sit in very well with labor unions and with um, the masses generally. And so it's something that will most likely come to the front banners post-election in 2011.